sorry guys yeah no um one second okay okay all right well i just started recording and uh you can see that miss katie is a little out of sorts this morning but that's okay that's just the way we roll sometimes um but we're having fun with it uh so we're gonna start with prayer and then we'll get started with our day um with our lesson so um, father i thank you so much for letting us come here today i thank you for the sun that's shining on uh Alyssa and, and the rest of those people who are having nice weather and i thank you for the rain that is coming to wash all this falling away in in south carolina i pray that you uh are with everyone today and as we rest in your sabbath that we are able to think about you and how awesome it is to be part of your kingdom, to be your children. We give you this children's ministry. We ask that you host it. We invite you to teach us, even Miss Mary Jane and myself, as we talk about your righteousness and putting on the breastplate of righteousness. So we just give you this day and ask that you come and to teach us Holy Spirit and you show up Messiah's name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, so last week we were talking about the one part of the armor of God, who remembers what part of the armor of God we were talking about? Alessa? You have to unmute real quick. Never mind. Oh, who knows what it, what we were talking about last week? Uh, Mr. Bivens. The belt. The belt. The belt, the belt is right. We we're talking about the belt of, um, of the armor. And so I'm going to read um, Ephesians uh, where it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And I'm going to just read the whole scripture to you. I don't know if we did that last week or not, but um, or the week before that, but I'm going to just read it to you. And it starts with Ephesians uh, 6, uh, 10. And it says, finally, be strengthened by the Lord in his vast strength then put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, against spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to risk to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to stand. Stand, therefore, with the truth, like a belt around your waist, righteousness, like an armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with every power, prayer, and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. And so I'm going to stop right there. But he's saying, put on the full armor of God so that we can resist what? Alessa? So we can resist evil? Yes, yeah, so we can resist the evil and the evil plans that are happening in this world. And so the first thing he says that we should put on is the belt of truth. And the belt of truth is the word of God. And the belt of truth we learned last week is anything God says on the matter. It is not what the world tells us is true. It is not what we think is true. It is what God's word says on any ma matter. That is the truth. And so when we put the truth on, it actually connects to the breastplate of righteousness. And so Miss Mary Jane has got a breastplate of righteousness. And so we were saying that we have to put on the full armor of God so that when the time comes, you're able to stand against the enemy. And it will just, when the enemy is coming at you, ha! your bullets don't hurt me. It, it'll just bounce right off of you, right? So we were able to stand against the schemes of the enemy when they are shooting us, um, shooting at us. So Paul, who was writing this, was writing um, about the breastplate 
of righteousness and um, he was looking at a Roman soldier. And when he was looking at a Roman soldier, uh, now we already talked about the, they wore like this tunic that was a kind of a dress-ish thing that went to their legs or their knees. And so the breastplate of righteousness was made of, does anyone know what they made the breastplate out of in those times? Uh, Israel? Gold. Gold? Yeah, it was metal. It was some type of metal. Sometimes bronze, I think, is what was some of it is. And it was when over the mid the midsection of your body. So it would start somewhere around here and it would go all the way to the waist, hip, the waist or hips area. And so it might even go, because this is made for a kid, it might would go even even longer than it is on Mary Jane. So um so, but it, what is it protecting? What would the breastplate of righteousness or the breastplate in a, um, be uh, protecting? Havla? Your core. Your core. And what specific organs or important part of our body do we need to protect right here? Um, McKinsey? Our hearts. Our hearts, yeah. And so our hearts. So yeah, so it's, it's protecting our hearts. It's protecting all of our vital organs right here. Because if our, if we get, if our heart gets shot or, a, you know, we're dead, you, you can't survive, you can't live. So, or you're gonna get really, really, really hurt and you're gonna, it's gonna take you a while to recover. So when soldiers would go into battle, they would have to protect their core. And so they would have something, a metal shield, to um, protect themselves. What do like people in the army wear now to kind of protect this area? Does anyone know? Uh, yeah, Josiah? Don't they wear like a bulletproof vest? Oh, they yeah, wear they wear. One. Go ahead. They wear a bulletproof vest. Yeah, and it's made out of. Um, do you know? Iron. Iron, yeah, cavalar. That's what I thought the word was, is cavalar. So yeah, iron is, is because now we don't have just arrows being shot at people. They have guns and guns are a little bit stronger. So you ha you need something even more um, able to withstand um, bullets and traveling at fast speeds and all that kind of, you have to stop the momentum of it. You have to protect yourself. So bulletproof vests um, is what we're doing. And so they, police officers and people in the army, they wear, um bre a breastplate just to um protect ourselves too i think you hit me here um all right so righteousness does anyone know what the definition of righteousness is what word do you hear in righteousness what words beginning righteousness miss mary jane what word do you hear Righteousness. No, it's no. right. It's she hears right. right, right? So righteousness is right living and it's making decisions that are right. So um, do you know that the Bible says, well, maybe I should let you do your portion and then okay. I'll come back. Sorry. The justice, living right that aligns with God's expectations. Um, truth is knowing. So, like the belt of truth gives us the, well, you know, ability to know God's truth. But righteousness is actually doing that, doing the work required when you know that truth and when you know what God's expectations are for your life. So, there's a few different kinds of righteousness that um, are defined throughout the Bible. We have and that are very relevant to us today. So perfect righteousness is God's perfect righteousness um, because God is perfect. None of us can, no human can be perfect in their righteousness. We're only driven to, we want to be perfect. We, we try to um, model our behavior after what Jesus taught us, but we have to understand that we will never be perfect in righteousness like God is. Um, we just, that's what gives us purpose in life and gives us the model to live after, but we will, we can't achieve that without him. 
and we won't ever achieve it in our earthly bodies. So perfect righteousness belongs only to God. Different types of righteousness that we kind of apply in our human lives, one of them is very common, comparative righteousness. So this is when I compare myself to someone else. Like, oh, Miss Katie, she has blonde hair and I have brown hair and I like blonde hair is prettier. That's comparing myself to her. Or when you are looking at like, uh, sometimes like when I first started teaching, we were just talking about this when we were teaching. And I was talking about when I started teaching in the Hebrew Roots movement, um, I was like, I'll do it, but I don't really necessarily know what I'm talking about because I'm just now learning about the feast days and all what it means to keep them and that kind of stuff. And so if I look at someone who like maybe someone who I think is amazing and knows a lot of scripture, like maybe Miss Tyler Rosenquist, who we we admire and listen to um, a lot of her teachings. And I think about if I look at her and I look at myself and I'm like, oh, I'll never be like her. I can never teach like um, her or have a ha I can never do what she does. Or I could look at Mary Jane and I'm like, oh, look at Mary Jane. She's just willing to give all her hours to God and all her free time. And, and then I struggle just to even get out the Bible and read sometimes. And, and I start comparing myself. Have you guys ever compared yourself to someone else and fallen short, felt like they were better than you? Have you ever compared yourself to someone else and thought you thought no one? Pavela said she had, have you ever, have you think your parents ever compared themselves to um, other parents and think, oh, that parent, they're, they're not a good parent or, oh, that parent's got it so much better. Their kids are much more behaved than mine or any of those things. Yeah. We compare ourselves or you could do it in school. This person's smarter than me. I'm never going to pass the test. And then you just start comparing yourself and you put yourself down or you build yourself up. And comparative righteousness, even though we do it all the time, <clears throat> it's, it's deceitful. And it deceives us because when we compare ourselves to others that behave badly or, you know, we say, well, I'm glad that I'm not that kid because he's always in trouble. Well, when we compare ourselves to someone that we think our behavior is better, then we justify in our own mind that when we do bad behavior, we're still not as bad as them. So we're better than them. So that's very deceitful. But on the flip side of that coin, um, we might feel badly that others are doing better than us. Like Miss Katie said, if we think that a kid is smarter than us in school, well, then that makes us feel very badly. So when we compare our righteousness to someone else's righteousness or how they are doing, how they are walking with God, it's a very deceitful thing. We, we should not do that. One of the reasons is because like, I know what I think and what I think, how I act and what I will do in every situation. Like I know what goes on in here, but if I start comparing myself to Miss Mary Jane or even Havila or Havila's mom or um, Eviana's mom, and I just start comparing myself to them, I don't know what they're thinking. And so I'm comparing my insides to everyone else's outsides. And so you can look one way, really put together, but in the inside, you could be having a really bar, had really bad day. You could be struggling you could be upset like other people have no idea what's going on in here and so that's also deceitful because when you start comparing yourself you are comparing yourself to things that you're making up in your head that you don't know all the facts so it's like you're comparing yourself to things that are not truthful and it leads to judgment too because you yeah. think oh that person got it so easy they have everything together in their life god probably loves them more than me but you don't know what that person's going through or what they've been through. And so we, we can't, you can't establish yourself by comparing yourself to others because God made all of us very uniquely. And sometimes we might not be satisfied completely with who we are or what we look like and things like that. But by comparing ourselves to another human, we're only setting ourselves up to fail because God made us all very different, very individual. So don't do his comparative righteousness. Don't use it. So another type, so we have God's perfect righteousness, deceitful comparative righteousness, 
And then we have imputed righteousness. So imputed is a word that I actually had to look up with a dictionary. So, uh, <laughs> Me and, too. so I'm going to read. So when Yeshua died on the cross and rose again, he was found righteous. Yeshua's death on the cross took away the death penalty of our sin and pays the cost of our sinful debt. The cost of our sinful debt is eternal separation from God in hell. But when you trust Yeshua as your personal savior, the penalty of sin is removed and the gift of God's own righteousness is given. We call that imputed. So it is given to you in your spiritual wallet, God's own perfection and holiness. The thing that was impossible for us to reach as humans is ours to access because we trust and we trust in Yeshua and we, we accept him as our savior. And when we do that, God will start to remove those bad things from us. And, and he imputes us with, with his righteousness so that we can be a better servant to his kingdom so that we can be more established in his ways and his expectations for our lives. So I'm going to, Mary Jane doesn't know I'm going to do this, but when, so we are simple. Like if you were to look inside me, my heart would be spotted because I'm simple and I make mistakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, Mary Jane is sinful. She just doesn't do everything right all the time. She doesn't do everything right all the time. I know y'all thought I was perfect, but yeah, I assure doesn't. you I'm not. And I promise you I'm not either. I lose my temper and I yell at my children and, you know, I sometimes yell at my husband and I do a lot of stuff I shouldn't do. Anyway, but when we choose to believe in Yeshua, when we choose to believe, we are given a gift of righteousness. And it's because Yeshua was perfect and he did not sin. And when he went to the cross and he died, he did that sin offering. He satisfied the law of sin and death. But when we choose to believe, God takes his, and pretend this is white, that he takes his cloak of righteousness and he covers it in us so now when god when god looks at us he doesn't see the black hearts or the spotted hearted all that stuff he sees mary jane clothed in yeshua's mantle clothed in the righteousness that he earned and he just freely gives it to us like a gift and we put it on we we are given it and we are allowed to wear it and all we have to do is believe. And so that is what imputed righteousness means. It's the gift that Yeshua gives us that we are allowed to put on. So one thing for you guys to remember is that you are righteous. You, every single one of you are righteous because you have his righteousness and now you can wear the breastplate of righteousness. So we all do things that we know we shouldn't do. But when we truly love God, he convicts us with the desire to change so we become better people and better um, image bearers for him. Changing your ways is like taking off a piece of clothing. And now you have to put a new piece on um, so that you're not left vulnerable. And God provides us the desire to replace harmful habits with healthy habits, replace the standards that we created for ourselves of right and wrong and replace that with his standards of right and wrong, his truth, the truth that we are uh, state or that makes us stable, his belt of truth. And he replaces that in our hearts. And so we have to practice that. Um, and when we practice that, we, we have to daily put that on and remind ourselves and put on his armor. And so that minute by minute of every day, we're kind of comparing everything that we come into contact with and measuring it up against his truth, measuring it up against his standards and practicing the righteousness that he gifts to us by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, as our savior. And so we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? So we are the Hebrew word is the Ruach HaKadosh. So we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit when we believe we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in us. And the Holy Spirit begins to start talking to us in our mind and in our spirit. And he starts saying, you know, he'll say to me like, you know, Katie, it's probably better to just stop talking right now. And you might think that uh, I'll give my children an example. 
I see them do something and I want to get mad because I'm like, I automatically go, oh, they're doing that. Why are they doing that? And I get mad that they're, that what they're doing. Hi, Hi we're on Zoom. You want to come and join us? This is Miss Angie. We're this talking, is this is our Zoom class. Hi, everybody. This is Miss Angie. Oh, look at all the lovely faces. Yes. Shabbat shalom. We're talking about righteousness. Oh, nice. And um, we were talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. I didn't it. It's okay. <laughs> and how the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. And he will say, um, when I was talking about my daughter, it's like sometimes I think that they're making a decision and, and I jump to the conclusions of why they're doing something and I want to get mad. But the Holy Spirit sometimes inside me will say, wait a minute, just wait and see, just see what happens. And I am still mad, but I'm just, I'm kind of not saying anything. And then what happens when I choose to listen to the Holy Spirit, when he tells me don't say anything, I can actually find out why they did something and it makes sense. And I'm like, Oh, I'm so glad I didn't just go in there and just start yelling at them because I didn't have all the information. So what the Holy Spirit starts doing, and that is working out in imperfection in me from the inside out. The Holy Spirit starts working through us from the inside out. Everyone say inside out. Inside out. So the Holy Spirit helps us start making choices from the inside out. And so he will slowly start working on the areas that we struggle with. Um, that are sinful, like not forgiving our, uh, not forgiving people when they hurt our feelings, losing our temper, because that Bible says be angry, but do not sin, right? So losing our temper, um, fussing at our brother or sister, maybe we hit them when we shouldn't have, maybe we didn't honor our mother or father, or we didn't obey them right away. So that's not honoring them either when you have delayed obedience. So those are some of the things that the Holy Spirit will start whispering and talking to us about and helping us to um, maybe think about what we say before we say it. And so when we start making choices that honor God and that are living toward him, it's, we are living the right side up. So it's, we have, it's our life is like this boat and we are living the right side up, right? Remember God's truth is what he says on any matter. So when we are doing the things that God is asking us to do, our life is right side up and we have ourselves clothed in Yeshua's righteousness. We are only doing this because the Holy Spirit is helping us. We are not earning our salvation by doing the things God tells us to do, like keeping Torah, eating kosher, honoring our parents, um, listening to good music. Those are things that we do because we love the Lord. It does not give us anything else other than an expression of loving the Lord and showing others how we're doing it. The other advantage of doing right side living is because when we are making choices that honor God and that honor his word, we are putting on the breastplate of righteousness because when we're making choices that honor God, we are showing other people that we are God's children. What happens when we start sinning and we stop listening to the Holy Spirit and we don't do the things that God asks us to do? Are we right side living? Are we, is, are we living the right way when we start sinning? No. So we are doing upside down living. Now, I don't pretend these holes are gone because this is a toy, but this boat is upside down and it's by the river. What do you think would happen? What would come and want to live inside this boat upside down? Mackenzie, what would come and live inside this boat upside down? What do you think if it's by the river? Try one more time. Fish. Uh, upside down on the, if it's upside down on the, um, maybe on the river bank, sorry, like on the grass, like not, you can't float in the boat if it's upside down, right? You can't go anywhere. So if it's right beside the water, upside down, what would come and live in it? Uh, Jada, what did you, what did you say? Mackenzie, what did you say? Frogs and bugs. Frogs and bugs. Jada, what would you say? Um, if it's fresh water alligators and sharp teeth fish yeah and so uh, you will also drown yeah okay let's see um israel what else might come that way um spiders spiders bats. yeah uh caleb what else might come animals yeah now if we are not living in the way that we're supposed to be and our boat or our life is upside down, we're inviting things 
And some of you might like some of these animals, but I don't like anything creepy crawly. I don't like alligators. I don't like snakes. snakes. I don't like spiders. I don't like lizards, uh, lizards frogs. frogs. They're okay as long as they stay away. Um, I don't really want to touch them, but some of you might like them and that's okay. But if you flip this over, cause you want to try to do what's right, what's good. They're going to come out. They're going to come slithering out or crawling out. They might jump at you. They might get you. You are inviting the enemy to come and live in your area or bringing trouble to your life when you are choosing to live upside down, when you are choosing not to put on righteousness. So how do we do this is by choosing to live the way God says, not only is our life going to be on the right way, but we could actually put it in the water. We could actually go fishing, right? We could go do what this boat is meant to do when it's upside down and not living the way it's supposed to. All it's doing is providing a place for things to hide at us. We can't use the boat the way it was created to be used. So when we are making choices that don't honor God, we aren't living right side up, are we? We are not living righteously, but when we choose to honor God and follow his instructions, we are putting on the breastplate of righteousness and we are not inviting these creepy crawly things into our lives, things that cause us to sin and lead us away from God. So that's why we are to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Not only does it show other people who God is and that we are his image bearers, that we love the Lord, but it also helps us stay on the right path so that if a fiery dart were to come at us and Miss Mary Jane were to shoot it at this boat, it's not going to get in. It's going to jump off because we are living righteously, right? And that's putting on the breastplate of righteousness, okay? And that's about it. So we're going to end with prayer and then... Um, We'll stop and we'll see if you have anything else you want to say. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for letting us come here today. Thank you for letting us just honor you. And I pray that you help us to think about righteousness, that you are perfect. And that through our belief in you, you give us righteousness and help us to remember to put it on and help us to, to start thinking about the things in our life that we do that honor you and the things that we do in our life that don't honor you so that we can always put on your breastplate of righteousness so that we will be armored up and we will not be open to any attack. So Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your presence. And I thank you for your guidance in our life. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. All right. So I'm going to stop. Whoops. Wrong one. Stop the recording.